Welcome to the webinar. My name is Maciej Gruszka. I work in the Oracle product development as a product manager for set of products. And I today gonna be host of this session. And I have with me Dave Cabellos, our senior principal product manager, who is uh, working with a Verizano project. So today, uh, I heard many times that people are talking about the cloud native applications. Why they are so excited? What kind of benefits do they expect to get? Well, there's lots of reasons to move to cloud native applications, right? And, and as you can see on the screen, um, you know, we can walk through all of these, right? So um, the whole design changes a bit when you go from the traditional application architecture to the new, you know, cloud native architecture. It's uh, by design, you know, resiliency is built in. Um, extensibility um, is, is again, sort of part of the, especially with the adoption of microservices where I need to extend just part and not all. Um, and of course, open source friendly, um, you know, a lot of the tools we'll even talk about today are open source um, pricing and, and optimization of costs where I, I need to, um, really just pay what I need. I can kind of turn on and turn off different pieces of an application or different instances of an application to, as, as traffic needs um, change. Um, automation and, and especially, you know, we talk, we talk about DevOps is really important, right? So I need to be able to automate um, infrastructure management. I need to be able to automate application management. Um, and, and of course, with this automation also means uh, better, uh, more uptime, right? Fewer errors because it's it's automated. We take away that you know human manual error aspect. Um, so what does this mean for us? It gives us you know better time to market, which means you know better response to business needs, um, operational agility, so I can actually you know make changes as, uh, much more quickly than I could in the past, um, and I get full visibility as to what's happening not only in my system but um, it's sort of like a business and system visibility ends up being combined and I can, you know, I can let my technology adapt to business much more quickly. Yeah, uh, I, it is clearly obvious right now the benefits of cloud native application, but I can hear the discussions about moving to cloud native applications already for a long time. So what are the reasons that the customers didn't go there yet? Uh, was, what are the problems they are facing in the transition? There are there are some pretty significant challenges here, right? So culture and complexity are are um, that's probably top of the list here as as we're showing on screen. Um, but there's there are many, right? And many sometimes are nuanced, and sometimes are very much in your face, right? Um, including things like um, the complication of you know having to pull together all the different you know tools of the day and make sure they work well together, right? So this this complication of integration. And things like how do I then integrate and leverage my existing tools with these new tools I want to use? It's 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 pretty complex. But what about Oracle? Do we have here any any set of tooling that help customers to achieve the benefits of cloud native applications or make this transition to the cloud native architecture? Definitely, definitely. You know, as you know, Oracle's been in the uh, in the enterprise solution business for for many many years. Um, and so it totally makes sense that Oracle is going to have a solution for this problem, right? For this set of problems. Um, it starts with, you know, at the bottom of this stack, you see uh, Oracle Linux. Uh, Oracle Linux is, uh, you know, a Red Hat compatible kernel um, that includes things like case place and, and additional, you know, enterprise centric features that make uh, Oracle Linux really a great choice uh, for running your critical workloads. And then sitting on top of that, um, Oracle provides the Oracle Cloud Native Environment, which is an upstream distribution of Kubernetes coupled with the things you need to manage Kubernetes, right? Uh, uh, so a lifecycle, an API that go along with, with Kubernetes clusters for cluster management, uh, as well as things like uh, container runtimes, um, CNI or, or um, networking interface, storage interface. So again, that that you know core piece of what's necessary for um, cloud native app deployment. And then you see the last piece sitting here is Verizano, right? So Verizano is an enterprise container platform that provides really, you know, app management across clusters, multi-cluster management. It's all the stuff you need that kind of sits on top of um, those other two pieces in the stack. Oh, I understand. Uh, could you spend a few more words about this Verizano component as it looks the most appealing to the application developers? 
happy to. As you know, this is my product. Um, so Verrazano is, uh, it's at the full, first I'll say it's, it's developed fully in open source. Um, it does include, you know, a series of open source components. Um, some are developed by Oracle led projects. Some are, you know, from community led projects, but together it's a complete opinionated, opinionated secure, uh, platform. Um, and what do I mean by that? I mean, complete as in we pull together all of the really the key pieces, the key technologies that you need to be able to manage not only your applications, but the infrastructure that sits below it. Um, and then we do that in, in an opinionated way. That is, we actually um, we curate the stack. We make sure all these pieces work well together. We provide a life cycle for the stack. Um, and so we, we kind of expect you to work on, we, we expect it to be deployed in, the, in an opinionated way. And then from, a, from an application deployment perspective, we provide some things like application modeling that uh, make it easy to pull together a series of microservices into, a, into an application that might have its own life cycle. Um, it really does enable you to, to easily move applications from, you know, from on-premises to the cloud, from non-containers to containers. Uh, and it does provide that, you know, not only the day one operations, but the day two operations and the day 102 operations, right? Fully uh, DevOps friendly. Um, you can automate everything involved with Verizono. It includes things like, you know, as you deploy an application, we automate the application setup within the service mesh. We automatically capture metrics, logs, traces. Um, uh, there's a whole lot we do there to make to make it really easy to, to roll out your applications. Um, and this is really, it's a platform that's meant for um, any application. So whether it's a traditional application like a web logic application or a new microservice, maybe that's a, a Java microservice, maybe it's a, a node based microservice, maybe it, it's written in Ruby, doesn't matter, it's container based, you wanna run it here. Um, and you can put them all together, right? It's That is what it's meant for, right? It's meant to be able to manage all of your applications and manage them where you want to run them, right? Whether it's um, across clusters, I'll say it a little differently. It is meant to run your applications wherever you want to run them. Could be, you know, in cluster A, cluster B, that could be on-premises, could be, you know, in the cloud. You, you can manage these things across clusters, across clouds, and it's really, Arizona provides that cloud agnosticism, right? You get the same, not only is it the same uh, benefits, the same behavior across these clouds, you actually use the same one across clouds, right? So it is truly a multi-cluster, multi-cloud platform. Oh, I can see it. It tries to address many of these buzzwords that currently uh, dominate the application development market. Would you be able to provide us some kind of example how we can better understand how Verizano behaves in the context of microservice application, for example? Definitely. Um, so I have a, I actually have a, a series of microservices here. This is a, a, a demonstration that a friend of mine from the Helidon team uh, created. Um, and it is, it is a series of four microservices here. Um, the three yellowish blocks uh, represent microservices that were written in Helidon. And then we have an off the shelf long running action coordinator. Um, and really this is, we talk about this as an application model in the sense of it's more than just one microservice. It's the series of microservices that really have a dependency on each other and they need to be deployed together. Although you can, you know, update them separately, scale them separately, um, you know, all you get those benefits of separate microservices, but really it is an application that goes together. Um, so Verizano really makes it easy for you to do that, to, to take something like this, um, um, deploy it in a way uh, that's, you know, production ready, safe, in a very simple way and give you still that life cycle for this whole application. So let me talk through just a little bit of this. And I'll, I'll tell you that my demo environment has, um, I actually have a multi-cluster setup where I have um, one cluster in Montreal in our, in our OCI data center in Montreal. We have uh, another cluster in our OCI data center in Toronto. And I have these set up, you know, Verizono has this notion of admin clusters and managed clusters. So an admin cluster is a cluster that you interact with um, and can host uh, workloads and then managed clusters are typically uh, meant to be uh, hosting workloads for you. So you interact with that admin cluster, tell the admin cluster where you want it to deploy applications and it does the work for you, right? So, so in this case, we're actually gonna, we're gonna deploy this application system through the admin cluster. The admin cluster is going to 
defer to. It's a it's a you know a federated model, right? It basically says, hey, oh, hey, uh, managed cluster, I want you to do this for me. Um, and so the, the managed cluster, Verizon on the managed cluster is actually going to do the work here. It's going to create the deployments, um, set up the application within the service mesh, capture metrics and so forth. And then it's going to start sending those, the monitoring data back to the admin cluster so that from the admin cluster, we can do the single pane of glass management. De um, deployment requires a couple of different um, let's say descriptors, some, some YAML files. So I'm, I'm gonna walk through these really quickly and they're very simple, right? And for each of these, there's basically a workload definition. Where do I get my container? Um, how, do, how do I access this when it's up and running? And so, so here's my first YAML file and it's you know that F1 booking service, the main, this is the place where we're gonna interact with the system, place where customers will actually come to it. You can see that it's a Verrazano Heldodon workload. So that's a special type of workload. Ver uh, Verrazano um, has some extra automation under the covers when you're doing when you're using this type of workload. You can see here it tells me where do I get my containers. Like, um, I've got this. Um, here's where my image is, right? Not where to get my containers. Where do I get my image? Here's my image. And then when I when I access this image, how do I want to access it? And it's a port seven thousand. Um, so the same with all of these, right? So my seat booking service is very much the same. Um, my payment service, again, very much the same. And then the last one is a little different. This is a containerized workload. So this is a little more generic. It's not written and it's not using Heladon libraries, but it is a Java. Um, it is a Java workload. And you can see we're going to access this one at port 8080. So four pretty simple, excuse me, descriptors. Um, and then the last thing is, so we're going to, these are the pieces. And then I pull it together with this thing called an application configuration. So let me show you that file. So this basically says, what are the components? And then what do I need to do to those components as I deploy them? Like what are the extras that I need to add? Um, so really I've got, a, I've got a series of components that are, they're not written for any particular cloud, right? Um, they're just you know, written to run as a microservice. Now we're gonna, we're gonna actually put them together and we're gonna say, how do, I, how do I access them? How do I, what else do I need to do here? So for this first one, this F1 booking service, um, so I'm gonna list out my components. So first is this component is the F1 booking service. I need to apply a metrics trait that says, where do I get the metrics for this um, application? Let me see, we're gonna scrape through port uh, 7,000 and then I'm gonna apply this ingress trait, right? So this ingress trait says, how do I, how do I wanna make this application available to the public? Um, and so we're gonna set up um, a prefix here um, and so when I when I deploy this application, it'll be available at this um, at this URL prefix. Um, and then the the rest of the components are a little simpler, right? Because I I don't want to expose them to the world, so I'm just going to say, here are my components. Where do I need to scrape metrics from? And that's it. And lastly, and this is kind of a key one, um, this is the placement piece. Where do I want to deploy this thing? So this is telling. Verrazano, which cluster to put this on. So if you saw it in my, in my diagram a couple of slides back, we had two clusters and I'm going to put it on the managed cluster. Could have gone in this environment, it could have gone to the admin cluster or the managed cluster. You can have many clusters uh, that just tell it where to go. Um, so why don't I why don't I do this, right? Let's let's do a quick demo. Um, so here I actually have, just want to make sure I'm still logged in. I'm in OCI. Um, I'll move this out of the way. And you'll see I actually, so this is, I'm in Montreal. I have a cluster here. This is my admin cluster. And if I switch over to Toronto, um, you'll see I have another cluster here. So these are up and running. Um, and then I'm using Cloud Shell to interact with this Cloud Shell. If you haven't used it, it's a it's a pretty nice little, um, it's a pretty nice little tool. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply those YAML files like we did before. I'm just, um, and I actually have these as, let me go here. Um, I have a single file for my components. So I put them all together on one file. So I go here and say, kubectl apply. So here's my, my components. And we're going to create those four components, right? The booking service, the seat booking service, the payment service, and the long running action coordinator. So these are basically now, custom resources in Kubernetes. And now I'm gonna create, I'm gonna apply the other file. Um, and this is that application configuration, right? Um, so this is saying, okay, assemble these 
these components into an application, send them off to their managed cluster. And then when you're there, do all the things that need to happen, right? Like um, create a service account, set up the de Kubernetes deployments, Kubernetes services, set up the uh, network access rules, um, and then start collecting my my um, my metrics and send them to the uh, to the at to the the admin cluster. So let's let's take a look really quickly here at um, the Verrazano um, admin console. So you can see here, um, I don't it's saying I don't have anything deployed yet. But let me do a quick refresh, and we should see something coming up here. So if we go here and we take a look at um, we, this is um, open search dashboard that comes, you know, pre-configured setup out of the box. Um, and if we do a refresh here, we should be able to see um, some new, some new logs happen. Let's, let's look at the Verrazano logs, right? So we should see some logs here. And now I should be able to hit my application and, and get some, um, some, some traffic here. Let's go back again to my cloud shell and I'm going to access this application. Let's do it again just to get a little bit of traffic. And if I come here, I should be able to see my application logs. Yeah, you can see we've got uh, some new logs coming in here. Uh, it's trying to do payment uh, things, and actually, this should eventually fail because I was passing in. If you look back here, I passed in. These are dummy credit card numbers; they're never going to work, right? Um, so we would see failures showing up here. Um, the other thing that's happened, so you know, if I connect the dots here, what's happened, right? We we deployed an application very simply. We've set it up within a service mesh. It's it's all you know running well. We've now started to capture logs on the admin cluster. If I look here, um, if I look at my, it might be this one. Let's refresh this. You might see something up or down, but it does. It automatically starts capturing um, the metrics for the different, um, what do you call it, the different microservices that are running there. And if we look at Kiali, again, this is. Um, it, so this is, you know, we get this benefit from using um, the Istio service mesh where we can actually see where the, where the traffic is running. If I click one of these, I can actually kind of see the different traffic that's happening, how much traffic um, is going to each different, um, uh, each, each of these different uh, components within the application. Um, so it's pretty nice, right? You can, you can, you know, easily monitor your application and get it up and running. Um, so let me show you, let's let's switch back to slides and, and kind of recap what we just did here, right? So um, when I deployed my application, I, I applied my components and my application configuration. Um, when I did that, Verrazano got a token. Um, it created a service account using that token, created an authorization policy for that service account. It created um, four different deployments. Um, these are Kubernetes deployments. It then created um, Kubernetes services for each of those deployments, um, created a gateway and a virtual service for um, uh, the, the main microservice there that uh, uh, got a new certificate, put that certificate into a secret and created network policies from uh, using that secret and then updated the Prometheus config map, started capturing metrics and, and pushing logs. Um, so a whole lot of automation. Two two cube control commands and and here we are, All right? So, yeah, they, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I see is Kubernetes. Uh, Verizon is using very standardized Kubernetes artifacts. So we are using Kubernetes API for interaction. We are using some uh, typical Kubernetes uh, artifacts like token, service account, authorization policies, and so on. So it is probably this is the reason why it is very Kubernetes vendor agnostic. But do we provide any kind of special treatment for OCI, or do we provide any special interaction with OCI services? Definitely, um, as you can imagine, you know, Oracle on Oracle is is a you know is 
is the best way to run things. So um, when you deploy Verizano, as I did it here, right? So I, I deployed it on um, OKE clusters, right? Um, and with that, we do things like we automatically use things like the block storage and the object storage. Um, we can use OCI DNS, like you can figure it out. You can configure it that way. Uh, we do use OCI networking out of the box. When your applications are running in, um, in OCI, they could take advantage of things like um, the different cloud services that are available, like autonomous database, um, Exadata service, MySQL service. Um, we also enable you to plug in um, so you can, you know, indirectly or directly plug in the logging and monitoring capabilities of, of OCI. So you can say, let me take, let me capture my metrics and logs into uh, Prometheus and OpenSearch, and then I can pipe them into OCI logging and, and OCI monitoring, or I can go direct, right? I can actually plug in OCI logging and OCI monitoring um, right from the Verizano installation, and then um, you would get all the benefits of, you know, these, especially things like log analytics that you, that you can use um, by pushing things into this observability and management stack within, um, within OCI. Um, we also use, of course, the OCI registry. And in fact, the containers that I pushed today are in the OCI registry. Um, beyond that, we actually have some planned uh, enhancements coming up. So uh, for example, there's the OCI DevOps service um, the OCI DevOps service can be used today to uh, deploy into Verizano. Um, it does take a, a little bit of special configuration to make that work. We want to make that drop dead simple. So it's, uh, you know, it becomes a first class citizen from OCI DevOps. Um, we want to adopt the OCI service mesh when Verizano is running on top of um, OCI. Um, that's, you know, in our short term roadmap. We've also looked at um, the service operator for Kubernetes, which would give us um, the ability to spin up, uh, you know, light, provide lifecycle benefits around autonomous database, MySQL service, and streaming service. Um, so this is a little bit further out in the in the pipeline. And then um, API Gateway is another one that's uh, you know on our investigation list at this point. But this is um, but these are the things. So the dark red ones are the things we integrate with today. And the uh, lighter red ones are the ones that are um, on our roadmap. Oh, that's a lot of information that you covered today. Is there are there any websites or any locations where participants of today's webinar could learn more? Absolutely, uh, there's lots of information out there. Of course, you know the basic. The first one is the Verizon IO um, website. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter um, at Oracle. We've got a dedicated Verizano um, set of of uh, information. Um, the Verizon source code is out there as well. And then um, we've got a YouTube channel. And this last one is actually an invitation to join our public Slack channel. So um, it's a great place to interact directly with engineers from, from Verizon and uh, lots of conversations happen there. Oh, uh, it's really a lot of opportunities for participants to learn more. Uh, Having said that, I'd like to thank you today for, to, for participation at our webinar. And I'd like to thank to Dave to deliver uh, and run the session about managing containerized application within Kubernetes in OCI. I hope you get like a first touch and smell what uh, Verrazano might be. Um, and I hope you really enjoyed this piece of information. Dave, thank you very much. Any last words you would like to say? Uh, I just want to say thank you to you, Magic, for uh, for hosting this and to everybody uh, who's who's watching. Thanks for your attention, and feel free to reach out to me on that Slack channel too. Happy to happy to talk to you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody.